Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 9001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. In this video, I'm going to cover the first few elements of Clause 7.1, Resources. I'm going to unpack Clause 711, General, 712, People, 713, Infrastructure, and 714, Environment for the Operation of Processes. These all sort of work together, so I thought I'd cover them all together. Okay, let's get started on the first clause, 711, General. I know what on earth does general mean? As I've mentioned in other videos, these general clauses are always at the beginning of a new section and they explain generally what the requirements are. They specify what the overall intent and requirements are and then the supporting clauses get into a bit more detail. I'll break down this general clause and you'll see what I mean. So Clause 711 General states that the organisation shall determine and provide the resources needed for the establishment, implementation, maintenance and continual improvement of the quality management system. The organisation shall consider the capabilities of and constraints on existing internal resources and what needs to be obtained from external providers. So this is simply saying that the organization needs to ensure that there are sufficient resources, which could be people, equipment, software, hardware, and so on, to not only get the quality management system up and running, but to maintain it and improve it long term. When the organisation reviews what resources they need, they will look to see what is available internally, so what they already have within the business. And if there are gaps, then they need to source what's needed externally from other providers or suppliers. So you can see this is a simple overarching statement of what is expected from the organisation to resource their quality management system. The following clauses break down the different types of resources to consider and provide, which leads nicely to Clause 712, People, which states that the organisation shall determine and provide the persons necessary for the effective implementation of its quality management system and for the operation and control of its processes. That's it, short and to the point. You can see how this single statement supports the general clause and actually kind of repeats itself. The only addition to what we already know is that the provision of people as resources is for the quality management system implementation as well as the operation and control of its processes. The business needs to ensure they have enough competent people to ensure that the quality management system and their operations are effective. Competency is touched on in Clause 7.2, so be sure to check that video out for more details on what that will look like in your system. Then we move to Clause 713, Infrastructure, which states that the organisation shall determine, provide and maintain the infrastructure necessary for the operation of its processes and to achieve conformity of products and services. Again, short and to the point. This time it's about the organization figuring out what infrastructure is needed to ensure that what they do or plan to do is achieved, all around providing their product or service to their customer, of course. So what are they referring to when they talk about infrastructure? Luckily, we don't have to look too far because ISO 9001 have added a lovely little note at the end of this clause, which tells us it states that infrastructure can include 
buildings and associated utilities, equipment including hardware and software, transportation resources and finally information and communication technology. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? So if you're implementing a quality management system, you not only have to consider the resource of your people, but it should also be the tools, equipment, hardware, software, communications tools that you provide for them to use to ensure that the customer's requirements can be met. The final clause in this section is 714 environment for the operation of processes, which states that the organization shall determine, provide and maintain the environment necessary for the operation of its processes and to achieve conformity of products and services. This time around, it's about the organization figuring out what is needed in the environment that your people are working in to ensure that what they do or plan to do is achieved, all around providing their product or service to the customer, of course. So again, what are they referring to when they talk about the environment? Luckily, once again, ISO 9001 have added another note at the end of this clause, which tells us what environment could be. It states that a suitable environment can be a combination of human and physical factors, such as social, which could be non-discriminatory, calm, non-confrontational, psychological, which could be stress reducing, burnout prevention, emotionally protective, and finally, physical, which could be temperature, heat, humidity, light, airflow, hygiene, or noise. These factors can differ substantially depending on the products and service provided. So while the earlier clause referring to infrastructure was about things that you could see or kick, this clause referring to the environment is more about the things that aren't so physically visible. To ensure that your people work in an environment that supports them socially, psychologically and physically ensures that your people work for an organisation where they operate at their very best and that can only benefit your customers and the delivery of your products and services. So to wrap all of these clauses up, it's important to note that when you determine what resources you need to establish for your quality management system and effectively operate and control your processes, you need to consider three things. Your people, the infrastructure that is provided for your people to work in, and the environment that is provided for your people to work in. These all add up to ensuring the best possible outcome for your customer and the quality of the product or service you are delivering. My big question to end on these group of clauses is what is an auditor looking for then? So for me personally, when I conduct an audit, I see all of this throughout the audit interviews. While talking to different employees, contractors or managers, I will come across a few different things like whether there are sufficient people resources or are they overwhelmed and have just got too much on their plate. I'll also see and have demonstrated to me the software, hardware and systems that they have in place. I'll also see any equipment or tools that they've been provided with, and I'll see whether the environment that they work in is conducive to the output of their task, so lighting and temperature, for example. Overall, it's about the work environment as a whole. So you can see that this is all about observation throughout the audit. There normally isn't a lot of documented evidence here. Unless in meeting minutes it's recorded that more resources are needed and the action is recorded, which actually reminds me that in clause 9.3, management review, they do talk about reviewing the adequacy of resources. So that simple requirement in clause 9.3 really backs all of this up further. 
Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your organization and management system? Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.